class of materials you use in all kinds of ways, every single day. You drink from it, wear it, and rely on it to keep you safe. It's hard to imagine a world without polymers. From takeout containers, to pipes, utensils, and appliances. To a human spine you can create on a 3D printer. Polymers appear just about everywhere. In fact, it's hard to imagine what we can't do with this incredibly versatile material. Polymers are molecules which are around us everywhere in our life. They are uh, the plastic bags or disposable water bottles that we encounter. They're in advanced materials such as automobile parts and medical equipment as well. And so plastics and other types of polymers are everywhere. So what we have here is a lumbar spine segment from an actual patient. We CT'd the patient and then through a treatment planning software system, we were able to contour all of the vertebrae, the sacrum, and then the discs in between. What this is going to be used for is we do virtual reality simulators for the medical students here. We could bend the spine, as you can see here, and that gives the medical students the capability of flexing the model. I have a choice of three different materials that are loaded into the machine. Flexible one, an ABS-like one, and a hard clear one. I can also have the option of mixing some. So for instance, right here, I've got a hard clear and a flexible, and I can choose uh, different percentages of each one. This is a 3D printed lens that I designed on a computer and we had printed here, right in this room. Printing the lenses on a 3D printer allows you to make complex lenses very easily and very cheap, whereas if you make a complex lens, it might cost you more. But you can just whip this up on a computer in five minutes and have it printed and have it in your hands the next day for polishing. This lens will be part of a system that allows us to see wide angle views, kind of like fisheye lenses, but our goal is to make fisheye much more resolute and get higher definition images on the wider angles. And that can be used in uh, astronomy or even just uh, recreational use, but it gives you a stronger resolution on the edges of the camera. Despite the amazingly intricate things we can do now with polymers, society's perceptions of them are almost as complex. When we think of plastic on one side, it's fake, it's artificial, gaudy, cheap, but plastic also means you can transform it, it means versatility. If you made that a Facebook status, you'd say it's complicated. It's got really positive and negative meanings. The word polymer comes from Greek, where poly means many and mer means unit. A polymer is a chain of many small molecules that are all joined together. Polymers can be natural, like silk or cotton, or synthetic, like nylon, polyester, and moisture wicking fabrics in athletic clothing. Take Nina's helmet. No athlete likes to be weighed down. So the trick is to make protective gear that's lightweight, but tough enough to cushion impact. But the perception that they last forever isn't really true. While they can last a long time, polymers do eventually degrade which means safety gear like this needs to be replaced periodically. When we talk about polymers, we often think about them piling up in landfills and never breaking down. But there is another sustainability concern that you might not be aware of. And that's where polymers come from. Uh, these polymers are uh, usually uh, derived from petroleum sources, so crude oil is recovered from the ground, and that oil is then converted to polymers and plastics. In our lab, we're looking for another alternative to petroleum. Uh, we're looking at renewable resources, which can be regenerated on an annual basis and have a very limited environmental impact. There are many uh, options which are being commercialized by companies and are be de being developed in labs as well. Uh, things such as vegetable oils and their fatty acids. And uh, they can be oil, uh, oils such as soybean oil, which is uh, very common in the United States. Uh, castor oil, palm oil, 
palm kernel oil, linseed oil. Uh, all of these are uh, similar in that they have what's known as a triglyceride structure, which means uh, every molecule has three fatty acids. A related uh, type of oil are uh, oils which are uh, actually produced by algae. And these algal oils actually have very similar characteristics to the vegetable oils. Uh, the advantage of the algal oils is that they can actually be produced in wastewater. And so you therefore no longer have a competition with food sources uh, for uh, chemicals and, and plastics. There are even microorganisms which uh, create uh, type, certain types of polymers for energy sources. And so uh, any and all of these sources are of interest uh, to replace uh, the conventional plastics and polymers that we've uh, become so dependent on as a society. This is polylactide, it's a polymer and is derived from corn sugars. This is also polylactide, but we've modified it with a vegetable oil. The modified material has superior mechanical properties, uh, such as an increased uh, toughness, which we measure with tensile test. Here we're showing you a tensile tester in our laboratory, which is used to examine the mechanical behavior of polymers and plastics. In the tensile testing experiment, a specimen of the sample is placed between two grips. The tester then pulls on the sample until the sample breaks. Uh, we measure the force and we also measure the change in the sample length before it breaks. What we're looking at here is a sample of polylactide, which is a very brittle polymer. And you can see that it breaks very quickly. It takes very little change in length in order for the polymer to fracture. In contrast, we have polylactide, which we've modified with vegetable oils. This modified polylactide can undergo a significantly higher elongation before it breaks, and it therefore is a significantly tougher material than the neat version of the polymer. This material is called a thermoplastic elastomer. It's derived from vegetable oils like soybean oil and uh, palm kernel oil. A thermoplastic elastomer is a very unique material in that it behaves like an elastomer uh, or uh, a rubber, or you might be familiar with a rubber band, a rubber tire, in that it's uh, stretchy and can elongate. Uh, and if you release the, the force and release the stress, it will go back to its original uh, configuration and shape. Uh, however, what makes this material different from other elastomers and rubbers is that it also has characteristics of the thermoplastic. A thermoplastic is a material that if once heated will change its shape and can be reformed and reprocessed into a new shape. Uh, for example, water bottles are thermoplastics. Uh, styrofoam is made from a thermoplastic. Thermoplastic elastomers are used in a variety of applications, such as materials used to modify road materials. Also, they're used in soles of tennis shoes, as sealants, and even in biomedical applications. One additional use uh, for uh, biorenewable polymers are packing peanuts, which uh, rather than uh, being fabricated from polystyrene or styrofoam, uh, which has been the traditional material, uh, they are now being fabricated from uh, corn or potato starch. These starch-based packing peanuts function much the same way that, that the styrofoam-based packing peanuts would, and that yet the big difference is that the starch uh, packing peanut is biodegradable, and at once it's discarded, it can either be uh, disposed of in a compost um, and or it could be recycled but it will eventually degrade back to carbon dioxide and water uh, which is the starting materials that the plants used uh, to create the peanut. market for bioplastics is relatively small uh, when compared to the total plastics market in the U.S. and in worldwide. Uh, the good news is that, that the fraction of, of the market for bioplastics is growing every year. And therefore, there's a lot of opportunity in the development of new materials 
uh, which can have a reduced environmental impact. I think in terms of sustainability, you hear a lot of this now. If you go to a restaurant, where did that food come from, right? Or do you have a green menu? But if you're talking about consumer products like your plastic lunchbox or um, you know your plastic computer case, I think we should ask the same question. Hey, where did that come from? Uh, most of it's going to come from petroleums in the past, but if you've got polymers that come from renewable resources, it's the same thing as saying, okay, that's a free-range chicken, you know, this is a product that did not come from an oil refinery. I'm inspired to work in the area of bioplastics as I know that it is a problem that uh, future generations will face. Uh, it's clear we're not going to run out of oil in the immediate future. However, if, if we start now in the development of new bioplastics, uh, we will have time to very carefully develop uh, methods of preparing them and optimize their properties so that they will be ready in future generations uh, when uh, we are reliant on these alternative resources uh, for uh, plastics and, and other uh, materials. Our perceptions about polymers are as complex as the materials themselves. If it were up to you, what message would you tell society about new sustainable polymers? Would you be able to create a new status for materials that sometimes get a bad rap?